Hello, my name is Daniel Thomas Sandra Daly. This video is commentary on David Edding's Bulgaria. Commentary on David Edding's Bulgaria. Now, there's the first novel in the five sequence se series. It's fantasy. There it is. Porn of Prophecy by David Eddings. This is a printing of the first edition from Del Rey, and um, the first edition was also in paperback. Um, and this is the, the Del Rey first edition. It's 60 something, 63rd or 62nd printing, somewhere around there, I think, of, of the first edition. Now, there's five books in the series. The first book is Porn of Prophecy. The second book is Queen of Sorcery. The third book is Magician's Gambit. The fourth book is Castle of Wizardry. And the fifth book is Enchanter's Endgame. And if you can see from those titles, they all have a reference to the game Chess in the title of the novels. Now, it's um, it was written in the 1980s the saga, and the, it spawned a sequel five-book series called The Malorian, and two spin-offs called Belgara, Belga, Belgara the Sorcerer and Pogara the Sorceress, and finally The Reaving Codex, which was sort of like an encyclopedia of the world of the Seven Gods, essentially. Now, I first read The Belgariad in the 1980s, uh, when it was, all five books had been published by the time I'd started reading it, the mid-1980s when I started reading it. Porn of Prophecy was given to our family by a friend of the family called Jared Bryant, and after I'd read a, my first real fantasy novel, The Twilight Realm by Hugh Cook, which I adored, I started on Porn of Prophecy. And I read it avidly, then uh, went down to the library and found all five paperback books in the library, a different edition, the Corgi edition was the one I read. And uh, he was huge to me from then on in was David Eddings. So essentially it's fantasy sort of in the world of the Seven Gods with the, the world of the Alorns and the Angarax in the Belgariad, and in the Malorian, the Malorians come into it a fair bit. Although a little bit of Maloria is in the fifth book, where the saga ends. Now, it's a traditional sort of fantasy saga, a quest. It's a quest by... to recover the orb of Alda and to fulfill a prophecy. It's a, a white sort of orb which has power in it, fashioned by the god, one of the seven gods, Alda. And only a child of innocence can hold the orb. And, um... Belgar Belgarion, the champion of the Belgaria, pretty much is that child of innocence. Now he comes from a, a line of kings, the Reven kings, who have been in exile, and uh, he lives on Faldor's farm. And he has a grandfather who he doesn't really know how old he is, but his grandfather, Old Wolf, is actually Belgarath the sorcerer, and his aunt Pol, Belgarath's daughter, Aunt Polgara, an ancient aunt. His father, Garan, died a long died when he was young or something. I can't remember the exact story. But Garion, he was first known as, and becomes Bel Garion later, when he earns his glory. It's a traditional sort of thing. If you know the Lord of the Rings and fantasy books in general, there's no great surprises from the Belgarian. Probably the actual surprise that's very well written. It's high-class fantasy of the first-class kind. David Eddings was quite a big name in the 1980s, and probably in the 1990s as well, in fantasy books and by the general public to a bit. He was a best-selling author and was well-known. I'll read it. I'll read this from the back of the Horn of Prophecy, the blurb, to get you the idea. Long ago, so the storyteller claimed, the evil god Tarak sought dominion and drove men and gods to war. But Belgraph the sorcerer led men to reclaim the orb that protected men of the West. So long as it lay at Riva, the prophecy went, men would be safe. But that was only a story, and Garion did not believe in magic dooms, even though the dark man without a shadow had haunted him for years. 
brought up on a quiet farm by his aunt Paul, how could he know that the apostate plan to wake Dread Tarak, or that he would be led on a quest of unparalleled magic and danger by those he loved, but did not know? For a while his dreams of innocence were safe, untroubled by knowledge of his strange heritage, for a little while. Thus begins the first book of a Belgariad, a magnificent epic of immense scope, set against the history of 7,000 years of the struggles of gods and kings and men, of strange lands and events, of fate and a prophecy that must be fulfilled. Okay, so it's standard questing fantasy saga. Questing is a common theme in fantasy novels, like Lord of the Rings is a quest. And Belgariad, in this sense, is not really too different. It's not a huge novel. It's, that's probably about 100,000 words of there, about somewhere around there, I guess. The, the rest of the books are of similar size, slightly bigger than Porn of Prophecy. And uh, normal, a normal enough reader, depending on how quickly you read a novel, well, there's five novels to consume. Is it worth the effort? Definitely. The rating can be quite high on the Belgarian. A lot of fan people who enjoy fantasy might find, oh, it's an okay book. But some people are usually quite taken with the Belgariad. It didn't catch on the way Harry Potter could. But in its day, for as much popularity as it probably was going to get, it generally got. Um, Lord of the Rings was popular in the 1980s when I was growing up, and I read it. And Tolkien was well known. David Eddings started to emerge quickly enough as the Belgrade unfolded and the other books which David wrote. Today, he's known, people know the Belgariad. It's not quite as famous as Harry Potter by any means. But I've seen the movies for Harry Potter and read the books of the Belgariad, and it's certainly just as good as Harry Potter in my opinion. I recommend The Belgariad. It's excellent fantasy if you enjoy fantasy reading. And the whole series is exciting and draws to probably a satisfying enough conclusion and the scope for more, which did indeed come. Commentary on The Belgariad. Thank you.